Uh, all right, welcome once again, everyone. Let's pray and uh, let's continue with our uh, studies. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful morning. And Father, we thank you for all the, uh, Lord, the knowledge, the wisdom, and the learning, Lord, that you have for us from the Book of Acts. Father God, even as we discuss uh, about Paul's second missionary journey, we pray, God, that uh, uh, you will help us, Father God, equip ourselves to serve you well. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So before we go into Acts chapter 16, we already completed Acts 15. And uh, what are some of the things that we saw? Acts 15? There is a dispute on the matter of circumcision as a requirement for uh, salvation. And then what happens? They take the matter to Jerusalem. Then there is a council. They meet. They decide. And ultimately, the leader of the church, James, issues a decree, a written decree, uh, which is then shared with people all around. So that is something we saw. We saw the preparation for the second missionary journey where Paul and Barnabas decide whom to take. And there is again... Uh, Two disputes kind of in Acts 15, which is they don't want to take, yeah, Paul does not want to take John Mark. Who does Paul ultimately take? Silas. Silas. Okay, so we'll go to Acts 16, but before that, let's talk a little bit about John Mark. So John Mark, we said, was young, and we don't know the exact reason why he left uh, at the starting of the first missionary journey, and Paul did not like it. But in the second missionary journey, Barnabas wanted to take John Mark along. Now, there is one more reason why he may have wanted to do that because John Mark was Barnabas's cousin. Okay, so that is another uh, reason for us to consider. Maybe that's why Colossians 4 10 it clearly says that John Mark is Barnabas's cousin. So, the discussion that I wanted to have with us is see. Paul is saying no to John Mark on the basis of his performance. But Barnabas, we know that he was in general a very, very generous personality uh, who wanted to raise up leaders. So that we can understand. But there is this other aspect of being related to someone or having a connection with somebody and then giving them a chance. Uh, what do you all think about that? They call it uh, nepotism <laughs> these days, where you give somebody your own people chances, opportunities. So, what do what do we think about this in ministry? Personally, I'll disagree with this because. Okay. The reason is like, okay, coming to the ministry or taking the responsibility not upon the uh, the relatives of that. It's yeah. dependent upon the calling and the passion what the person has mm -hmm. to the ministry. That's what I... Okay, repeat. sure. Thank you. Thanks, Francis. So it has to be the calling. It has to be the passion. Not just because, you know, somebody is close to uh, us. I personally, uh, my opinion is like uh, we can give uh, opportunities, but we can't take like pull them in. Like if we if we see like they are interested, they can do it. Yeah. Even if they are family members or someone close to us, if they have that ability, if we see that can do it, there's nothing wrong in giving them the chance. But yes. if we see there's something they can't do. But if we take them because they are our relatives, that's wrong. Okay. So they should have the capability. So even if they are our relatives, but they have the capability, uh, you know, you feel like it's okay, right? Uh, however, see, in this case, Paul was quite clear about, as we said, performance. And he saw that John Mark didn't do. That's why he was upset. And he did not want to give John Mark a chance. But Barnabas... Uh, people could have easily said, why is Barnabas taking him? Because uh, he's a cousin. Right. So, when there are others who are able to, and then we choose 
our close ones over the others, that won't be right, isn't it? So we have to pick the right person for the job, for the task, and uh, not just favor those whom we know. Um, so like even coming back to your thought, Prince, like if people are uh, capable, we can give them a chance even if they are our relatives. I agree with you. But you see, uh, like especially in the church setting, there are so many people. Okay, so before doing something like that, before giving our own relatives a chance, uh, we have to be very objective. Like how many people are there who can do it or not? If nobody is able to do it and then we give our relatives, it, we can justify that. But if that if there are two other people who can do it and we just want to give our relatives a chance to identify their capability, uh, our heart may be pure, but it goes down uh, you know, in an unpleasant way with the other people. So this is all very tricky, actually. So we have to be so careful and uh, ensure that we don't, uh, like, there should be no dishonor to God's name. That's the point. So there are some comments here. Sister Chaya says, God's calling is important. So as Francis said, and Jacqueline is saying, in this case, Barnabas is led by the Spirit, so John Mark was able to make a difference in God's kingdom, not just because he was his relatives. Okay, fine. So in the end, we can say that, isn't it, Jackin? But in the beginning, we don't know how many years it took for John Mark to prove himself. So in the beginning, people may have complained to Barnabas that you're doing it because he's your relative. Yeah, Nina, something just wanted to add? Um, no, if because we are given uh, uh, Barnabas has given John Mark a chance, even though he he missed in the beginning, but he came to a place where he written the uh, Gospel of Mark. No, yes. So if uh, Barnabas was not, uh, I mean, was not kind to him, he never come to them. Yeah, no, I agree. I completely agree. See, Barnabas is he is doing it as Jackin said, led by the Spirit. That's what she also feels. I agree. But I'm saying the situation is so... Uh, only later we can say that. So at least for 20, 30 years, you can't say that. Because Mark has not proved himself. Everybody will say he's Barnabas' cousin. It turned out well at the end. Huh? So young? Yeah. Yeah, but others could have said, see, Barnabas, you want a ministry partner, you could have picked somebody from Jerusalem. Paul has taken someone like Silas, strong ministry partner. Why didn't you take? Why are you giving preferential treatment to John Mark when he's so young? So all kinds of questions come and we have to be careful when we are engaging our uh, relatives and friends. Okay, so that's a lesson from uh, Barnabas and John Mark. So now let's go to Acts chapter 16. It's a very crucial chapter. Uh, and Paul's second missionary journey accomplishes a lot uh, in terms of ministry. So uh, let's, let's see all the things that are happening. Uh, you can please open up the chapter itself. And the notes are also posted for us. To look at. So let me quickly share the screen with us and uh, we can look at the map here. So this is Paul's second missionary journey. As you can see, we do have a mention of the earlier places. And then, of course, there are new places. Paul's second missionary journey was around three years long, AD 49 to AD 52. So it's certainly longer. 
the first missionary journey 46 to 48 then they came back they spent a long time in antioch teaching the believers there went to jerusalem completed the jerusalem council came back spent more time in antioch and then is when they start off the second missionary journey so let's start with antioch you can see a star here antioch of syria and remember we said the focus has shifted to paul what barnabas did there's a little bit of information like he went to cyprus with john mark that's all we don't know the details so now when we say second missionary journey second missionary journey of paul we are only looking at what paul and silas did so they start off here at antioch and they take the road this time they're not taking the sea they're taking the road just follow the arrows so they go uh, via the region of cilicia remember cilicia what is the importance of cilicia anyone even online very easy all, all was from there right That's it. hometown yeah home region of paul remember when paul came to christ he went for three years cilicia arabia he spent his time there because the people were not accepting his ministry. So he went back to his own region and there he was growing in the ministry. So that is the region, Cilicia, Tarsus, Saul of Tarsus. You remember? Yeah. So that's the importance of this region, Cilicia. Tarsus is present there and Paul is from there. And from Tarsus, they go to the earlier cities. Derby, Lystra, Iconium and Antioch the same places where they had done earlier done ministries so that they can strengthen the people okay and today in act 16 we will see one more important thing which will happen in these cities this especially the city of lystra something very crucial is going to happen in act 16 okay so after they finish these regions now this region this entire region like derby list icon him can you see uh, can you see my arrow okay good then here this entire region is what is called as galatia you remember paul writes the letter to the galatians who are the galatians all these people iconium lystra derby they are the galatians okay so from galatia he will actually try to go to bithynia asia Okay, his desire will be to go to Asia. He wants to go to this region after, after Antioch of Pisidia. We will read about that. But the Holy Spirit will not allow him to go here. The Holy Spirit will not allow him to go to Bithynia. The Holy Spirit will lead him, you know, uh, to Troas. And then we will see how from Troas, through a vision, now he's waiting here and he's thinking, Lord, where shall I go? It's very led by the Holy Spirit the steps that Paul is taking, he will get a vision. And in the vision, God will speak to Paul and say, Paul, you go to Macedonia. So see how God is leading. Okay, So he goes to Macedonia. And then he does the ministry here. So we will look at all these. These are all, there are many uh, cities here, but they're all not of much importance. Philippi. In Acts 16, we will read till Philippi. And then from Acts 17 onwards, slowly we, we will read about other places in Macedonia, such as Beria, Thessalonica. Okay? And uh, later, he will go to this region called Achaia, where Achaia, one, uh, two important cities uh, can be seen close to that place. One, of course, is Corinth. Okay? And another one later on that he goes to is Athens. From Athens, he will then go on to a place called as Ephesus. And from there, he will continue through sea to Caesarea and to Jerusalem and then back to Antioch. So this is how uh, his missionary journey goes on. Okay, so 
the regions don't get confused when we talk about different regions so we saw galatia and then we saw macedonia then we will talk about achaia and then when we say asia ephesus okay ephesus is the main place in asia okay where he will actually uh, stop by so this is how the journey is going to follow so now let's get into acts chapter 16 uh and uh, we should be able to understand so we are here paul comes to derby and lystra and remember i told you something special is going to happen in lystra what is that verse 1 says behold a certain disciple was there named timothy the son of a certain jewish woman who believed but his father was greek so paul identifies a young man by the name of timothy what is so uh, different about him he his parents are from two cultures his father is greek his mother is jewish okay now this person timothy it is said he was well spoken of by the brethren who were in lystra and iconium so though he is a young man you remember act 6 where they say look for uh, uh, people with good testimony good report you know full of faith and the holy spirit so is timothy a person like that good good reputation good testimony sorry good testimony yes or no how do we say that well spoken well spoken is good testimony so when did timothy become a believer very young age okay when at what point when did uh, he receive the ministry of of uh, paul first missionary journey right first missionary journey can we say see they are here in ad 49 so um, ad 40 oh, ad 48 about you know a year more than a year ago uh, he must have accepted christ when paul came there now when we read the letters that paul writes to timothy he says that the faith which was in your grandmother you know uh, uh, lois and your mother eunice is now in you so that means as a family they have accepted christ so at that time he would have accepted christ and in the gap when paul was back in antioch he has grown in his faith and he has grown well that's why he's well spoken he has a good testimony with the people so it's so important to identify leaders who are committed Paul could have taken any young man thinking oh we need young people on the journey but he was careful to select somebody who later on he can groom uh, to be a pastor and a leader so someone with a good testimony also why did he choose Timothy there would have been so many young people who came to Christ in his earlier journey right when he came to Lystra why only Timothy why not other other boys or maybe even women i don't know why did he select only timothy yes good report that's true any other reason why he may have chosen only timothy okay observation observation true yes uh fine see good report observation of his life and he feels yes this person is capable to be a leader at the same time we can say like a special connect god may have uh, you, you know sometimes god puts that connection in our life's journey as we are doing what god has called us to do he puts people in our lives and he gives this special connection we don't understand why how did we meet them why do we why do we uh, you know work with them but it's as if god gives us a, a small glimpse of what their future looks like so paul had that special connection with timothy and uh, he he felt that 
there is something about this boy god has a plan for his life i have to groom him so it's a big thing right it's like come and join in the missionary journey that's a very big thing paul could have said help me as i'm preaching that's different but join the missionary journey it's a big invitation because of a special connection so again we can keep our eyes open for the lord to make divine connections with people you know like you see debora and uh, barak it's a special connection together they won the victory so like that spiritually god makes some connections and uh, that's the reason paul sensed it and he thought okay timothy is that person i have to take now look at verse 3 very interesting and controversial where it says paul wanted to have him go on with him and he took him and circumcised him because of the jews who were in that region for they all knew that his father was greek so just pause acts 15 paul and barnabas fought so that the gentiles should not there is no need for them to be circumcised What does it say here in verse four? He took Timothy and circumcised. So we we'll ask Paul, Paul, what are you doing? Just now, the decree has been passed. You were the one leading in in a sense, and now you are circumcising Timothy. What is the reason? Right, but. it's okay no timothy is saved he's born again what did what did the church uh, leaders decree you don't need to be circumcised for salvation settle matter is settled why are you circumcising timothy correct so we have to understand in its context what is the context context is paul is practicing a jewish tradition not because he believes in that jewish tradition you got it as if there is something there uh, which will keep us in the covenant or nothing like that because now they are all in christ but what he is doing is he is making the future easier for timothy to do ministry because he is looking at the future in the future timothy when he becomes the leader what will happen he will go be go and be speaking to the jews the jewish leaders they'll say why should we listen to you you are greek you are not even circumcised so with that in mind for timothy he circumcises timothy because there is an opportunity mother is still jewish right he's just taking advantage of that circumcising timothy so that whenever timothy goes he speaks in the synagogue speaks to the jews they will not reject him for more acceptance okay so see many lot of deep things are there in this as a leader we have to think about the future of the generation that we are training okay so sometimes they may wonder why why are you asking us to do all this because we're not just looking at them now we're thinking about hey 30 years from now when you're doing ministry things have got to be easier for you so you know learn these skills do it like this uh consider certain important crucial matters right so we push them why because we are not thinking that only second missionary journey they are helping us we are thinking 30 years 40 years so that's the kind of leader that paul was he was thinking for Tim- timothy way ahead in the future and so he went and circumcised him and after that they went around you know they took uh, timothy silas and you know they started continuing from there they gave the decree that was given to them in jerusalem and the churches were strengthened in faith and increased in the number daily all right so this is how he was doing the work so are you all able to recall the map derby lystra iconium antioch the work is going on and they went into all those places and also gave the uh, decree of the jerusalem council now paul wants to go to the next place so how like what what shall we how is he going to choose the next place from verse 6 when he had gone through phrygia and the region of galatia 
they were forbidden by the holy spirit to preach the word in asia after they had come to mysia they tried to go into Bith bithynia but the spirit <coughs> did not permit them so let's go back to the map let me show it to you again you will have a better picture yes so we are back to the map here and here what are we seeing they want to go where want to go to asia they want to go to asia but holy spirit is leading them via mysia okay and they also want to go to bithynia but holy spirit is saying no can this happen like we want to do something and holy spirit is saying no yes but we have to listen we have to be sensitive okay uh, why do you think holy spirit is saying no it's a good thing no to go everywhere preach the gospel yes correct it may not be the time right time maybe the people are not ready we don't know the circumstances in those places what if paul and team would have gone there and in the beginning itself they got into trouble it could have happened so the holy spirit leads us knowing everything we have to listen to him so thank god even though there are desires Paul has desires i want to do this i want to do that he's still listening to the holy spirit and holy spirit is guiding the holy spirit is saying no you can't go there now um you know you you just wait upon me so that is what is going on right now so let's see what else we can understand from this passage so holy spirit did not permit them so verse 8 so passing by mysia they came down to troas Okay, you can see the city there, Troas. Yeah, so they are following the leading of the Holy Spirit, and they came here. This is Troas, and here they are. Now let's see what the Holy Spirit is going to tell them. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. You remember the way God speaks, vision. Ananias got a vision. Uh, an angel spoke. You know. Uh, to call, to philip in different ways there's a vision there's a dream the angel speaks you get a receive a prompting of the lord in this case there is a vision to paul and in the vision of the night he sees a man a macedonian man who pleaded with him and he said come over to macedonia and help us so paul understood that this is from the lord what is god saying god is saying paul the right place to go for ministry now is macedonia so we can hear from the holy spirit to continue in our ministry work so from troas where does he go he goes across the aegean sea to this region called as macedonia because that's where the holy spirit is calling him now so here they come to macedonia verse 10 uh, he immediately sought to go to macedonia concluding that the lord had called them to preach the gospel okay in the region of macedonia so they come to macedonia and then there are the mention me mention of different cities there they reach the port town of neapolis and from there they go to a city called philippi can you see the city philippi neapolis they just make a stop there and they go to this city philippi now in this city of philippi is where a lot of ministry is going to take place now why is this an important city it's an important city because it, it was named after the grandson of alexander the great okay and there were uh, like veteran uh, you know like roman roman people uh, with high influence staying there in philippi so there were many people with roman citizenship in this 
uh, city of Philippi. So it's a it's a very um, respected town or respected city. And also, you will notice that you know in modern day Europe. So what happened? He went from from this place into uh, the region of Greece, which is Europe. It's today's Europe, right? It's the first city in Europe where Paul did his ministry, Philippi. So it's a, a, it's, it's a fairly a good recognized city. And we will also see that one of the main people that he is going to minister to in the city of Philippi is a woman, a businesswoman by the name of, anyone knows? Lydia. Yeah, Lydia. So that's the first person who um, kind of, you know, he she listens to the gospel and uh, she uh, follows Christ. So they come to this place called as Philippi. And verse 13 says, Sabbath day, they went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made. And we sat down and spoke to the women who met there. So remember, they always used to go where? Before, first place, synagogue. Okay, so seems like the riverside. This is a Greek, uh, you know, Greek culture. So we don't know why they picked the riverside. Maybe they heard that, you know, people will be available at the riverside. Uh, it could have been the marketplace over there. But prayer was also being held there. So wherever the people are, they go there. They go to the riverside and then they spoke to the women who met there. And there was a certain woman by the name of Lydia. She heard them and uh, she's, she's a rich woman because it says she was a seller of purple from the city of uh, Thyatira. So seller of purple, it's a, it's a very expensive cloth. Okay, So not just at that time, even for many, many more decades, the purple cloth was considered very expensive. So if this woman is selling it, she's very rich and she's from a well-to-do family. And uh, she was also a devoted person. She worshipped God. And it says the Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. So this is so beautiful. So today as we do ministry, as we do evangelism, we can pray. We can say, Lord, uh, you take us to the chosen places where you want us to go. Help us to identify people in that city, in that region, and open their hearts. When Paul was speaking, what did God do? God opened the heart of Lydia. So we can pray and say, Lord, you open hearts so that many lives will be uh, committed to you. So that's the way in which Lydia came to Christ in the city of Philippi. First, you could say European city and first believer in that European city, this lady by the name of Lydia. And uh, when she and her household were baptized, remember the pattern? Preach the gospel. Once they believe, water baptism, Holy Spirit baptism, equip them as disciples. So they're doing the same thing wherever they go. So now she's water baptized and she is, uh, she is a hospitable woman. That's another nice thing about her. So she's devoted to God. She's also a woman of hospitality. She's begging them. And she says, you know, if you judge me faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And so God is making an opportunity or opening the door for Paul and the team to uh, stay in the city of Philippi. So, you know, sometimes we wonder, like, if we go, what will happen? How, who will take care of us? We have a lot of questions. But the beauty is, when God is with us, he will open doors. If he is taking us to a city, he will make a way. He will uh, connect people to us. And, uh, you know, we will be able to continue doing the work of the ministry. Uh, I wanted to bring our attention to verse 11. Okay, verse 11. Just tell me. If uh, anything is different in verse 11, I'll read it for us. It says, therefore, sailing from Troas, we ran a straight course to Samutras and the next day came to Neapolis. Can you see anything different in that scripture?
Uh, no, they're traveling, so they have mentioned the places. But anything slightly different which you can make out? Huh? Yeah. So how see? Uh, okay, is it sea route that they are mentioning? Ha. Huh. So, yeah, correct. See, from Troas, they have to come to Macedonia. So they sailed and uh, they went to Samothras. Next day, they came to Neapolis. So it's just telling us the direction that they took. Is there anything different in that? Uh, yeah, they came to Macedonia. If you want to call that... It it's not an island. Okay. How about the focus is uh, sailing from Troas. We ran a straight course. We ran a straight course. Okay. <laughs> just straight. And even Jackin is saying uh, just a straight course. Okay. Why is the text saying we? They were traveling by uh, land, otherwise. Paul, Silas, Timothy. Prince John Mark is not here. <laughs> Have we discussed so much about John Mark not being here? <laughs> no, no, no. John Mark is not there. So why does it say we? Think a little bit. Okay, Nina says they were traveling by road otherwise. Um, uh, yeah, so they took the course as, as they did, uh, Nina. But my focus is on we. Who wrote the book of Acts? Very good. Look. So, when he is changing, till before this, uh, he says, you know, and they, they came to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the spirit did not. Verse 11, suddenly he's, he's shifting, he's saying from Troas, we ran a straight. So, who is there with them? Yeah, so there are four members. So, you have to pay attention. To the text so suddenly he switched to we that means that now four people are journeying together so in philippi there are four people okay small little things but unless we pay attention we will never register so He's narrating. He's not journeying. He's not traveling with them. Sure. Hmm. Okay. So 10 also is fine. Because that means that the Lord had us to preach the gospel to them. Come over. Yeah. So from verse 10. 10 and 11. So that means that Troas, he met them at Troas and from Troas he's continuing the journey into Macedonia. You're right, uh, Prince. So from Troas he's with them. But the main thing is that we must consider Luke is there. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, yes. So now Luke also has joined the team. And they are doing their work. Philippi, we've already said, it had many inhabitants with uh, uh, the privilege of the Roman citizenship. There were veterans of the Roman legions who were settled there. And uh, in such a city, God opened up the heart of Lydia. And this is how the missionary work in Macedonia. Let's uh, now continue with what's happening in Philippi. So I'll quickly share one incident. After that, we will pick it up 
in the next class so first thing was lydia has committed her life to christ and the next thing that happens in philippa is there is a slave girl uh, who has a spirit of divination or divination and this girl she is able to tell the future but what is the problem there is a wrong spirit so prophecy is a gift from god we know the bible promises the believer operating out of the holy spirit that we can prof- prophesy but that's from the right spirit the holy spirit this girl was doing fortune telling by the wrong spirit and that's the spirit of divination paul notices this and this uh, girl she is making money for her masters every time she tells someone's uh, future they are earning money in such a situation when she sees paul and the team doing ministry she she starts uh, you know telling about them that you know, they are god's people you know listen to them these are the servants of the most high who proclaim to us the way of salvation but he, she is saying the right thing but paul with the spirit of discernment understands that this is an evil spirit so what he does is he casts out the demon then the consequences are that she is no longer able to prophesy or you know through the evil spirit she is no longer able to um what can we say do her fortune telling okay so it is a loss for the masters and therefore they get angry they become so angry that they complain they they bring them to the magistrates and they say these men these jews they are troubling our city and they teach customs which are not lawful for us being romans to receive or observe so they make a complaint to the magistrates and we will see that paul and silas get imprisoned so that's what is going to happen so good ministry is going on in one place but at the same time trouble has started in the city of philippi so we will study about all that they go through in the next class all right so let me just stop here and um, you know i apologize for saying prophecy it was not prophecy we won't use the word prophecy for what this girl is doing fortune telling by the spirit of divination um so any thoughts before we close okay there's a lot happening already so i would just uh, request you to go back and read once more and uh, uh, but a lot that we can learn from as well right so spend some time i'm sure you'll be blessed reading through act 16 so let's pray and we will close uh, anyone from the class here who can lead in prayer father god we thank you lord we thank you for this time you have given us and father help us to really um, give very attentive to your word and live our lives according to that asking the holy spirit what to do how lord really help us to depend on you lord in jesus name we pray amen thank you thank you nina thank you everyone god bless you thank you for all the comments online students so sure. thank you bye for now you can